Welcome to Economics Lectures. Today we are going to discuss the linear probability models. Now we are going to learn two things here. The first is we are going to create a model where we use qualitative variable instead of continuous variable as a dependent variable. And then we are going to study the problems that are associated with this linear probability model. So uh, let's start with it. So let's start with the typical econometrics model where we have yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 plus an error term. Now, in typical econometrics model, yi and the x variable, the dependent variable, the independent variable, all are continuous variables. So they can have value from uh, negative up to zero and then up to positive values. They can have many values. But in linear probability model, the typical property of a linear probability model is that yi will not be a continuous variable but it will be a dummy variable whereas the independent variables x1 x2 x3 they can be continuous variable and they can be dummy variables. But the important thing is that for a linear dependent model, the dependent variable must be a dummy variable. So if this is a dummy variable, we can rewrite the equation as di is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 plus error term now for this to be a dummy variable we have zero on the way we have two values that is zero and one let's take for example um, whether an individual i passes a driving test or not and it depends on the driving hours, the time he practices driving. If he practices more, the probability of passing the test is high. If he practices less, the probability of passing the test is low. So let's say di is a dummy variable that the individual i passes the test, then di is equal to 1. But if the individual i fails the test, then di will equal to 0. So this is our dummy variable di and this is our model. The question is that how do we interpret this model? Let's say that in case x increases by 1 unit, what happens? In a typical model, when x increases by 1 unit, di should increase by beta 2 units. The same is not true in the dummy variable case. How do we interpret the, dummy, the linear dependent model? Since now we have di is equal to beta naught plus okay this is beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 plus b a typical model ex is explained as uh, that let's say that if x2 is increased by one unit then di will be increased by beta 2 units and there is an increase in x2 di will increase by beta 2 units but here di has only two values that is 0 and 1 
while zero is that he did not pass the test and one means he had passed the test so if x2 increases and di increases by 0 0.2 and we get di equal to 0 0.2 what does this 0 0.2 means either he passes the test or he fails the test so we cannot directly interpret it as we do it for the common regression equations we need to uh, understand this we need to recreate uh, some portions of the model in a different perspective so let's say that we uh, use the expectations of this dummy variable expected value of the dummy variable is equal to the expected value of the right hand side that is beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 plus the error term now since beta 1 and beta 2 x2 they are averages and the expected values are equal to averages we will have the same beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 but the expected value of the error term the expected value of the error term is always zero because the average value of the error term is zero because of the normal distribution of it with zero mean and uh, the specific standard deviation so this will equal to zero so now our model uh, is e the expected value is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 there is another way to calculate the expected value of di since we know that the possible values of di are 0 and 1 so we find the weighted average of it in order to find the weighted average we write e di as 1 for having the job and the weight plus zero okay one is for passing the driving test into the weight of it plus zero into the weight of it and the weights are the probability of passing the test and the probability of failing the test now let's say the probability of passing the test is e i so automatically the probability of uh, failing the test is uh, probability of failing the test will be 1 minus i as the total value of probability is equal to 1 so using these weights what we get is expected value of the i is equal to 1 into the i plus 0 into 1 minus the i since this portion is multiplied by 0 it will get eliminated and the expected value of the i is equal to the probability value of passing the test so we can see that uh, we can interpret basically this equation we can interpret this portion with the help of ti so beta 1 plus beta 2 x2 will give us the probability of passing the test and x2 will explain the incremental change in this probability let's say that if x2 increases by one unit driving r increases by one unit so passing the chances of passing the test will increase by beta 2 and if there is no driving experience then we will write x2 equal to 0 and the chances of passing the test will equal to beta 1 so this is how we explain the linear probability model and when we graph it we have 
uh, this graph here on the right hand side where uh, we have the value 0 which means that the individual fails the test and the value 1 where the individual passes the test and the red dot shows the uh, R's X shows the R's the individual was driving uh, the car for uh, his practice purposes so these are the various points here individual has practiced uh, let's say for many many hours and here he has practiced for very little hours and similarly for the blue line they are for those who have practiced little hours and they have passed the test and those who have practiced for many many hours and they have passed the test so obviously you can see that if you practice for many hours you will be able to pass the test and if your driving hour practice is low you will fail the test the probability of failing the test is higher and as we increase uh, the number of driving hours the probability of passing this test is increasing until we reach to the maximum point so that's uh, all about the linear probability model let's talk about the problems that are associated with linear probability model the problem the first problem with linear probability model is the di is not bounded by the range of 0 and 1 we know that probability value of di should lie between 0 and 1 where 0 means there are no chances and 1 means there are 100 percent chances but in this case if you try to predict for x less than a certain value let's say you want to predict for x lying over here then the probability in this case is negative a negative probability means nothing so we are getting negative values as well as for higher values of x's we may get a value of probability more than one so it is not bounded by the typical range of probability of 0 and 1 and that's the problem of uh, this model a typical probability must lie between 0 and 1 then there is a second problem that is of non-normality and heteroscedasticity if you look at the uh, residual the residuals are not normally distributed there is a heteroscedasticity in this case there is no normal distribution and therefore a typical ordinary least square model is not suitable to be used here unless the problem of normality and heteroscedasticity they are resolved and then finally we have a third problem that the overall r square value will be too low because you see most of the values here they are equal to zero and suddenly we have values that are compared with one so r square r square will always be very very small and this model is uh, the r square in this model is uh, not useful so hope you have understood this lecture if you have any question please do ask in the next lecture we will try to explain the logic model and the probit model Thank you so much for watching this video.